In this video, I'm going to talk about one of Nikon's Beast Amateur SLRs, <clears throat> the Nikromat FTN. What's up, guys? In this video, I want to talk about the Nikromat. And just just saying that it, it's it sounds funny to me the knicker mat. What are you shooting? Oh, I'm I'm shooting a knicker mat. It doesn't sound very professional. And and this actually this wasn't a professional level camera. It was uh, one of Nikon's I guess their amateur level um, offerings. And they had said that the reason that this isn't a professional level is because it it's not up to the build quality of their pro level SLRs, which I think is kind of crazy because the thing is like. It's, it's heavy as hell. It's all metal. It's really just a beast of a camera. This thing, you know, if I had to make uh, a comparison, this would be like those those grandpas that are really jacked, right? It's like a, uh, they're antique, but, but they're still diesel. You know, that, that's kind of what this is here. So what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll do an overview and I'll touch on, there was a couple things with this camera that, threw me for a loop and you know i i don't always go through and read directions or instructions manuals before i, I tinker with cameras uh, maybe i should but i didn't so there was a couple things with this that that kind of uh, you know caught me off guard the meter and uh, the the mounting of the lens were, were both kind of issues that might be helpful if i went through those so on the front side here got a couple things you've got your self timer arm You'll notice over here you got like a little little dot and that would correspond with your your shutter speed. You'll notice that all of your shutter speeds are engraved on the side here and you move those by moving this little metal arm. And as you move the shutter speeds, you'll notice also on the inside your viewfinder, uh, you'll see the corresponding speed move as well. On this side is your lens release. You'd hold that in and you twist your lens and we'll get to mounting the lens shortly. And this, this is a little indexing uh, arm or, or nipple, whatever you want to call it. On the side is your mirror lockup. And on the top side, you have your winding lever, your shutter button. This is your depth of field preview. It's like a little plunger. You'd push it in and you would see the depth of field preview through your lens. Cold shoe. Through this little view window is a, a little meter needle. And then your, your rewind knob. On the left side, M and X. On the back side, you have a door. And to open the door, there's a latch on that left side. You just Pull that down, that will pop your door open. On the bottom side, you have your battery door, your tripod socket, and then you depress this when you want to rewind your film. And you notice on, on the bottom side of where your lens will attach, on the collar is your ISO or your ASA. There's a, a little, I guess a, a little needle system that you just kind of shimmy back and forth from 12 to 1600. So that's the rundown of, of all the buttons and the dials and, and whatnot. Now, we'll go through mounting a lens on this because it, it, it is uh, a little bit different. So we will take our handy dandy 50 millimeter. Now, this uh, needs to accept Nikon lenses with rabbit ears. Okay, so what you wanna do is take your rabbit ears and you're gonna line them up and it may take a little bit of a finagle, but once you get them lined up, twist the lens. To let the camera know what the minimum and maximum aperture are, is you cycle it left and right. And on the side collar, you'll see that it's 562812. Those are the minimum apertures for the lenses that you attach. And in here is a little red little red dot you probably can't see it uh, on the camera here but when you're looking at it it'll tell you this is a 1.4 lens so there's a, a little red dot 
right there. So, and, and that would correspond with whatever. If you connected a, a 28, the red dot would be over here, and so on. Now, the one thing that, that really threw me for a loop was the metering, because this doesn't meter like a, a lot of other SLRs where you don't half press the shutter and then it'll meter. There, there's no automatic on this. Basically, you're going to look at the meter, you'll read the meter, it'll tell you you need to go up or down on your exposure, and then you have to manually make the adjustments. But what you want to do is to turn the meter on, you'll notice that there's a little red dot below your, your winding lever here, okay, and, and there's like a position of, of this lever. If it's all the way in, that means that the meter is totally off and it's locked. But if you pull it out just enough, right there, that's going to activate your meter. And, and you look, your needle here is, is going to sway back and forth, and also when you're looking through your viewfinder, you're going to have a plus and a minus. And that's going to go up and down until you, you find the correct exposure by moving your aperture and your shutter speed in, until you're going to hit that, uh, that, that correct exposure. And this is a center-weighted exposure as well. And because I had no idea about that, um, I was half-pressing the shutter, and I thought that the camera had a, a bum meter. And until I went through and, and read the directions, Go figure, and it told me no. This is you know this is how you do it. You pull it out, let that out a little bit, and then you go ahead and, and you measure your exposure that way. And I did get out and shoot a couple rolls with this guy, and I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll post some of those pictures up now. So my final thoughts on this camera are it looks, feels, and sounds like a classic. Speaking of, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't go through and, and show you the, the shutter sound on this thing. Is that not badass? I mean, it just sounds mechanical and it sound, it's, it's not like these newer cameras where you get it's like a little tss, 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 tss. No, I mean, that's like a bam. That's a shutter sound. But I don't know that I would particularly want to shoot with this all the time, only because it, it's it's really heavy, and you know that nothing nothing negative against it, but it's it's too heavy, I think, to be a carry around camera, and the camera you don't have is is not a good camera, right? So this would be fun to take out and and shoot every now and then, and it definitely it it gives you that tactile feel, uh, that real old time vintagey camera experience uh, but again it, it's not it's not going to be one that you're going to have with you 24 7 so that about wraps it up guys if you've enjoyed the video if you could please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and every couple days i'm coming out with new content some are overviews like this others are how-to videos all are film photography related so i have, if that's your kind of thing then wherever the the button is probably here uh, go ahead and hit that and subscribe and you'll get all the latest and the greatest content so until next time we'll see you to let the camera know what your minimum a match maximum minimum minimum minimum